Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on the introduction to exponential and logarithmic functions. Now let's get started. During this lesson, we will be utilizing the TI-84 calculator. First, we are going to plot the graph of an exponential function. I will use the color red, but you may use another color if you'd like. Using your TI calculator, enter 10 to the x power on the y equals screen. Then go to the table so that we can find the y values that are paired up with these x values. Now we are going to plot these ordered pairs on our graph. Pause the video if you need to so that you can have time to plot your ordered pairs. Once you've plotted your ordered pairs, then you can connect the dots to draw your curve. Your curve should look something like this. Now that you've graphed the parent exponential function, let's talk about the key point. Now every function that we've studied has an important point. For radical functions, it was the starting point. For quadratic point, excuse me, for quadratic functions, it was the vertex. Now, for exponential functions, the key point is 0, 1. We will discuss the significance of this key point soon. Now, let's change colors. I'm going to use green so that we can graph a parent log function. Now go to the y equals screen on your TI calculator and push log x. And then let's go to the table and find our y values that will match up with our x values. Now the first thing you might notice is that we have error for three of the y values. And that's because our log function, the domain of our log function, cannot be less than zero. Now go ahead and pause the video so that you can plot these points. Your points should look something like mine, and so now go ahead and connect your dots to complete your curve. Now hopefully your curve looks a little like mine. Now take a look at both of these curves and see if you can uh, tell what the key point is for the parent log function. If you guessed 1, 0, you're correct. Now let's take a look at some of the characteristics of exponential and log functions. Now when looking at the graph of the exponential function, you will notice that as x approaches negative infinity, then y approaches the x-axis which is where y equals zero. And this is also known as the horizontal asymptote. Now you might be asking, what is an asymptote? Well, an asymptote is an invisible line that your graph or curve never crosses or touches. Asymptotes can be vertical or horizontal. Now let's look at the graph of the logarithmic function. You will notice that as y approaches negative infinity, then x approaches the y-axis, which is where x equals zero and is known as the vertical asymptote. Now, both of these descriptions that I've given you, first for the exponential function and then also for the logarithmic function, these descriptions of what the curve does as it either approaches the x-axis or the y-axis is known as the end behavior. Now let's look at the domain and range, first for the exponential function and then for the logarithmic function. Now if you look at the graph of the exponential function, you will see that the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or you can use the symbol for all real numbers. The range for the exponential function would be from zero to infinity, but not including zero. In inequality notation, you could write this as y is greater than zero. Now the reason why the range cannot include zero is because y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. 
And remember, by definition, the asymptote is this invisible line that your graph or your curve cannot cross or touch. Now let's go back and let's look at the graph of our logarithmic function so that we can see the domain for this function. Our domain for the log function will be from 0 to infinity, but it will not include 0. And you can also express this as x is greater than 0. Now for the log function, the reason why the x, or excuse me, the reason why the domain cannot include 0 is because x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote. And remember, the asymptote is the invisible line that your curve can never cross or touch. Now the range for the log function will extend from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's look at the line y equals x on the graph above or on the previous slide. Now remember, y equals x is the parent linear function. And this is the line that inverse functions are reflected over. So if you look at this graph, you will see that the exponential function and the log function are reflections of each other over y equals x. And so this means that exponential and log functions are inverse functions. Since their graphs are reflected over the line y equals x, which is the parent linear function. If point AB is a point on the exponential graph, then point BA is a point on the logarithmic graph. We can use exponential functions to solve logarithmic equations, and we can use logarithmic functions to solve exponential equations. We will learn how to do that in another lesson. Now let's look at how to transform exponential and logarithmic functions. Now when transforming exponential and log functions, h and k play the exact same role that they did in the other functions that we've learned about in quadratic functions, radical functions, and absolute value functions. So if you recall, the h value represents the horizontal shift of the graph, and the k value represents the vertical shift of the graph. Now if you remember at the beginning of this video lesson, I told you that I would give you more detail about the key point of 0, 1. This key point will be the basis for any shifting that we do. For example, if I want to shift the graph to the left four units, it's this key point that I will plot first and then I can plot the rest of the curve. Likewise, if I want to shift this graph, this function, up four units, it's the key point that I move and then I can draw the rest of the graph. Let's look at some examples. Using green, I'm going to look at f of x equals 10 to the x plus 3 power. Now, what this means is that my h value is equal to negative 3. So that means I'm going to take my key point and I'm going to move it left 3 units. 1, 2, 3. And from this point, that is where I will plot my new graph. Now basically the equation for the asymptote will be y equals and it will be the k value and in this case there is no k value so it's 0. Now remember what we're saying is that this curve, this green curve right here, although it's as it continues going towards negative infinity it is continually getting closer and closer to y equals 0. But because y equals 0 is the asymptote, it will never touch y equals 0. Now let's look at another example, and I'll do it in blue. So I have f of x equals 10 to the x power plus 3. 
Now, since there is no other exponent with the x, that means that the h is 0. And I have a k value of positive 3. What this means is that I will not be shifting my graph, my parent function, I will not be shifting it to the left or to the right. I will only be shifting it up three units. So again, I start with the key point, and it's from the key point that I will go up two, three units, which puts me at zero, four. So now I'm ready to draw my curve. And it will look something like that. The equation for this asymptote will be y equals three. And again, what that means is that this line right here, even though it approaches y equals three, it will never touch or go below y equals three. Now let's look at a third example where we have an h and a k value other than zero. So here I have an h value of negative three and I have a k value of positive three. So I start from the key point. I am going to go left three units and then I'm going to go up three units and that will put my point right there. And so now I can draw the rest of my curve and it'll look something like that. My equation for my asymptote, again on this one, will be y equals three. Now let's look at the equation for transforming our log function. Now the h value is going to be in the parentheses with the x and then the k value will be after the parentheses. So now let's look at our first example. I'll do it in green. Now I have f of x equals log of x plus four. Now, just like with the exponential, we will do our shifting from the key point. Since h is negative four, we will go to the left four units from the key point. So that will be left, two, three, four, and that'll put us right there at negative three, zero. That's our new key point. Now it's from here that I can draw my curve. I'll do the best I can. Now, remember our equation for our asymptote, this time it's not going to be y equals, it's going to be x equals, because see, this is the invisible line that our curve will never cross. So our equation will be an x equals and it will be the h value. So our asymptote equation will be x equals negative four. Now let's do our second example. I'll do it in blue. We have f of x equals the log of x plus four. Now here we do not have an h value, so h equals zero, and our k value equals four. So now I will start at the key point, which is one, zero, and I will go up four points. One, two, three, four, and there is my new key point. It is from here that I will try to draw the best graph I can draw. Now I'm ready to write the equation for my asymptote. It will be x equals the h value, which is x equals zero. Now let's move to our third example for transforming a log function. And I will do it in purple. I have f of x equals the log of x plus four plus four. So here I have an h value of negative four and a k value of positive four. So that means I'm going to start from my key point of one zero and I'm gonna to move to the left four units one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to move up four units. One, two, three, four. So I'll, this will be my new key point. And from here, I will draw my curve. And then I'm ready to write my equation for my asymptote. In this case, it will be x equals negative four. 
Here we have two more examples. Number three is transforming an exponential function, and number four is transforming a log function. Now I'd like for you to pause the video and see if you can transform these on your own. Once you're done, play the video and then see if you got them right. So, how did you do? Some of the main things that I hope you learned from this lesson today is that exponential functions and log functions are inverses of each other. Also, it is important to know that all shifting, all transformations, begin at the key point. H's, your H values, shift your graph horizontally. Your K values shift your graph vertically. You also need to remember that there are asymptotes. And asymptotes are lines, invisible lines, that your curve cannot touch or cross. I hope this video has helped you learn a little bit about exponential and log functions, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.